construction parlance, I would say by the bulldozer, and I am the grader. <laughs> and I uh, picked up from where he left off, which is often where he is uh, very uh, good at. He's good at starting. He's good at uh, just trailblazing. And somebody has to, you know, make sure that it's leveled off. So under BF's watch, Marikina became a highly urbanized city from a fourth class municipality. So Marikina uh, was teeming with opportunities and possibilities after nine years of complete. And uh, I was chosen by the local party to continue with the work of Bayani. And I, under the slogan, BF built the house and MCF will make it a home. So Marikina's transformation stemmed from this positive mindset that change could happen because in the last nine years, people were motivated to believe that the change is possible as long as they put their hearts and minds to it. And during my tenure as city mayor, I pushed for a new paradigm in local governance where we had strong will and a can-do attitude which are the key elements in our transformation. Marikina's trans uh, experience underscores the importance of giving leadership the leeway to get things done. So two qualities easily describe Marikina today, discipline and order. And I used to say, we need order before we have peace. And order is very basic in children. By kindergarten, you have this toy where you have these shapes. The star shape goes into the star hole. The round shape goes into the round hole. But when we get older, we forget that the sidewalks are for people to walk. The roads are for your cars to pass. The basketball court is for people to play. We kind of mix that around. And we use the sidewalks as funeral parlors, sala sets, parking garages, and everything. So we have to educate people and uh, instill in them that it's a purpose for everything. And in order for order to take place, you must put things in the right place. But first, you have to have the place to put things. So you have to build the sidewalks. So we built the sidewalks during my term. We completed 99% of all sidewalks in Marikina was completed during my term. So people respect and follow the law in Marikina. There are no garbage piles on the sidewalks anymore. We needed to reiterate, reiterate, reiterate all these programs that Bayani had started. Sidewalks are pedestrian friendly in Marikina. The river is squatter free. The public market is clean and orderly and the healthiest in the Philippines. And people consciously use pedestrian lanes when crossing the streets. There are no trash cans in Marikina because we have the principle, basura mo, alagaan mo. And these are some of the manifestations of discipline or order that reign now in Marikina. So the transformation started with a principle called the broken window pane principle, which was used by Mayor Giuliani in New York. And it says that people adapt themselves to their environment. So if it's an environment is in disarray, like a broken window pane, nobody fixes it, then people tend to behave roughly. And when there is physical order, people behave with civility and people feel at ease everywhere in the city. Enforcement has also been instrumental in Marikina's transformation with a discipline as a banqueta, sidewalks have been liberated from all forms of obstruction. And some say that the sidewalk is the most important indicator of urbanization. So when you start seeing uh, washing machines in the sidewalk, that's a big indicator that people are not educated enough and you need to educate them. Marikina's pedestrian-friendly sidewalks are complemented by a network of bicycle lanes that connect schools, factories, and government institutions. The bicycle lanes were started during Bayani's term, and again, I continued with them during my term, so that in the river now, we have 22 kilometers of 
bicycle lanes where people can converge and use going to work. We also have uh, consistency and constancy in the enforcement of laws in the city. The full implementation of the National Building Code is a good start, but it takes political will to really enforce it. It's probably only in Maritina where you have a seven-day building permit approval process because you have a checklist, you complete the checklist, you give it to a window, not to the city engineer's office, another window, and when you complete all the requirements, you just come back for it in seven days. But if the checklist is not complete, they return it to you right then. So it's a seven-day process. And so uh, strict enforcement of the building code provides better order also in the city. We run our city hall like a private corporation. When people come for favors, it's either saying yes if it's good, or no if the transaction is bad. Everybody has to toe the line and there is no preferential treatment offered to anybody because we believe that that will destroy our principles and policies. The city hall also gives uh, bonuses to uh, performing departments. We give bicycles every month for the best employees and the bottom 5% of our employees are let go every month if they are not performing, so they know this. And there's a continuous line of people who are applying for work. So we tell them, well, if you cannot get the job done, then we'll have to find somebody else. The business registration process has also been streamlined from 14 to 17 steps. It was during our term when we came up with the Citizens Charter, which is the city guidebook, which is actually a directory of all government services with a list of department heads uh, forms that you can download on the internet, how many days permits should be released, and the, the tasking of every department in the city. So it gives all the public a guide to how to use your city and how to make things happen. So this is important in promoting transparency and predictability. Integral to our pursuit of continuing improvement and go governance is benchmarking. And we benchmark with Singapore. We said we wanted to be a little Singapore. And we model ourselves after the good and award-winning programs of different localities. So I must stress that for good governance to come about, institutions must be able to execute competence and credibility. They must win people's respect, trust, and cooperation. And people don't mind paying their taxes if they see that every cent they pay for in government is returned to them in the form of good programs and services. When you talk about stakeholders in the city, I think one of the measures of uh, stakeholdership is if your real estate value have increased on account of good governance, then you can really say that from a value of 60 pesos in Marikina, at the end of our term, that 60 pesos was probably 20,000 pesos. So that's a good, good measure. A good indicator of credibility also is the ability to finish projects which have been started by the city. This has become our policy. All projects must be finished on schedule. And people only get to appreciate the beauty or impact of the undertaking when it is completed. So we try to be a government of performance. Our operational performance is simple, yet partial to measurable results. Our performance targets don't originate from the air. We take time uh, to plan every year for what's going to happen, what we will deliver to the stakeholders, and our ability to consistently raise our city's revenue annually is an important indicator of institutional competence. During my watch, we introduced a number of viable economic enterprises. We said we cannot be dependent on taxes and increasing taxes every year. The city needs to be creative as well. So we had economic enterprises like the Maritina Sports Park. We put up the Shoe Museum, which generates revenue. We have a convention center, which generates revenue as well. We have an annual river, Trangchangge, which generates 30 million every year for the city. 
and we're able to use these for cultural projects. 40 meters of water flooded the city during my last term in office. But Marikina has withstood the test of time. Bayani, being chairman of MMDA at the time, helped us with the rescue efforts, and we declared that in 30 days, Marikina will clean itself up. With a, with a, with a can-do attitude of the people and uh, the positive mindset, we were able to do that. In 30 days, the MMDA team with the army and the military marched out of Marikina that had cleaned himself up. So Marikina is now better prepared to deal with calamities. Well, leaders come and go, but the culture of discipline, the can-do attitude, and the passion for excellence remain not only amongst its people, but also the leaders, the department heads, and the workers in government. The pressure to sustain good governance now emanates from the people. So when people say, why didn't you go back as mayor? Why didn't you? Because I don't believe that you should be there forever. And I believe that people who have learned should be given the opportunity to show their creative ideas and see how we can continue and sustain the gains that we have learned. But the Kenyans will not allow to regress back to the old times. They are now very critical. They have telephone numbers of all the department heads, and they call, and they're mad if their garbage is not picked up on the day and time that it is supposed to be picked up. So you can see that, wow, oh, you know, when we have raised the benchmark of service, people are now looking at service, and people complain, and that is what I like, that people are now part of our governance. So this is Marikina today, teeming with life and possibilities, and a success story that validates the precept that anything is possible with a strong will and a can-do attitude. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen.